It took till the 10th week of the season for the Jets to get their second win. The Jets have beaten the New York Giants 34-27. to Welcome to Jets Talk. My name's Ryan. I'll be your pilot today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Guys, the Jets topped the Giants 34-27 to in MetLife Stadium, week 10 of the NFL season. And it's a good thing for the Jets. You know, you need some winning to make this locker room kind of bond back together. And we saw some good things and we saw some bad things. So what were the quick takeaways from this game? You come into this and the two marquee players that you're really looking at are Le'Veon Bell and Saquon Barkley, the fantasy, you know, high draft picks for this past year and it could not have been more disappointing <laughs> i think saquon barkley had like 13 carries and had one yard or something like that uh the jets completely shut him down which you know good for us Le'Veon bell on our side really didn't do a whole heck of a lot uh, i think he wound up leading our team in rushing he had yeah 34 yards on 18 carries we spent a lot of time over the last few weeks talking about jamal adams and his potential trade to dallas uh, in the offseason he had an absolutely huge day for us. Eight tackles, one assist, two sacks. He had the strip sack of uh, Daniel Jones, ran that in for a touchdown, and he absolutely manhandled Saquon Barkley on his way to the quarterback. He was not going to be denied. And this is exactly what you want to see out of your star strong safety. You want to see an impact that is actually tangible on the scoreboard, and he directly impacted the game in the biggest way for the Jets. We also got to see Leonard Williams come back and play the Jets for the first time, and his presence was felt on the field. You could see that the running game just could not get going with Le'Veon Bell, and he was just, you know, putting pressure on Sam Darnold all afternoon. It was definitely a disruptive force, and it's an area that he was able to distinctly take advantage of because he knows the styles of plays or the ways to get around our offensive linemen just from going against them week in and week out. This is the second straight week that I've really been impressed with Sam Darnold. Yes, he had that really bad pass and interception in the, you know, end zone of the Miami game, but... By and large, that game was overall, you know, a pretty good performance by him. This was similar in that way. There was a lot of throws that I was like, ooh, maybe you, should, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't attempt that. But, you know, he got it in there. He made the play. And those are the kinds of things that you're going to see Sam Darnold make, those uncharacteristic, you know, falling over type throws. You know, he could throw from multiple different platforms. And he's stepping up in the pocket. He's not really seeing ghosts, or at least it didn't come off that way. He was stepping up into the pocket where the pass rush was coming. He took a lot of big shots, and I give him a ton of credit. He stood in there and delivered a clean ball pretty much all afternoon. Sam did miss a wide open Vincent Smith, and I feel like you got to make that catch. <laughs> you got to make that throw. You got to got to score those points. That was a big play opportunity. I would like to see better accuracy there. But overall, very happy with what I saw out of Sam Darnold. We got to see our first action out of Blashawn Austin. The cornerback from Rutgers, he hadn't played since, you know, the opening week of 2018 at Rutgers. So seeing him on the field and actually play pretty well is very encouraging. I'm looking forward to watching him moving forward. He is a very good talent that just had the injury bug bite him hard. So if we can get him to stay healthy, we could have found a very nice piece in our secondary. I don't think he's a corner you want to entirely depend on just because of that injury history. But this is something that would be very helpful for the Jets moving forward if we can hit on a very late round draft pick. As far as Adam Gase goes, I'm not too upset with the play calling today. We obviously saw two very good drives to start the game. We had a ton of time of possession. I don't know what happened in the second quarter. I'd like to get a little more clarity on that. I don't want to get too high on this because the Jets were able to take advantage of a really bad defense. And I think Giant fans kind of understand the same sort of thing. This game was going to be a bad team beating another bad team regardless of who wound up winning. And you know, I'm happy the Jets won. As far as our draft stock that puts us at the fifth pick, that moves the Giants up to the third pick. The Dolphins winning today, they are at the fourth pick. So there's a little bit of shuffling going on in the top five. The Jets have the Redskins on the docket for their next game. Obviously, this could shake up the top five standings a little bit, so we'll have to monitor that moving forward. Guys, let me know what you thought down below. And as always, go Jets. J -E -T -S, J -E -T -S.